friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you've got questions about formulations or ingredients or a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please go to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase the longevity products off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business if you want to help change the world at the most important and basic level there is, which is the level of good health. If you benefited from the longevity supplements and you want to pay it forward, or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price, click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business for yourself. Earn thank you checks associated with having your own business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can also call the Brightside Ben team, phone team that is, at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Also want to remind you to check out our True Skin Health products. They're up at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 1% Gel and 5% Gel, and our new cleansing products, and our Blemish Repair Complex, which is up and running again. We ran out of that for a little bit. We were on back order for a couple months. It's back up at truthtreatments.com. Also, our Collagen Recovery Complex, all our Truth Treatments are available at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we have been talking about fats for a couple of, uh, a couple of, well, maybe a couple months, I guess. We've talked about the short chain fatty acids, the medium chain fats, and the long chain fats, all of which are super high concentrations of energy. The long chain fats are a little bit more difficult for the body to process. The short fats and the medium fats are much easier for the body to process. It's all about energy. Fats are so important because they are sources of energy, and it's all about energy in the body. When we are sick, we're somehow running low in energy. That is cellular energy. Not, I'm not talking about the kind of energy where you just feel tired. I'm talking about cellular energy, energy at the level of the cell. How do you get energy into the level of the cell? Well, first of all, you've got to have enough of the right kinds of fats, not the wrong kinds of fats, not the trans fats, not the processed fats. The trans fats and the processed fats are much harder for the body to extract energy from. The natural fats, the dietary fats, so-called long-chain fatty acids and short-chain fats and medium-chain fats, they can, they can be used. The body can derive, cells can derive energy from these fats. However, your body has to be able to process fats at the digestive system level for all of this to occur. Digestion, uh, digestion involves, uh, fat digestion involves the stomach, it involves the intestine, it involves the pancreas, it involves the liver. It's pretty complicated. Water-soluble nutrients, those go right to work. But the fatty nutrients are a little bit difficult for the body to process. 
That's why you got to have, you got to make sure that your liver is working correctly, your stomach is working correctly, the pancreas, you got to use digest, uh, enzymes, uh, digestive supplements to make sure all of these systems are working well, including digestive enzymes. Last program, we talked about the gallbladder. The gallbladder is a common site of digestive problems. There's over half a million gallbladders removed every year, many of them. If not, most of them are removed unnecessarily. And all of the time, 100% of the time, if a gallbladder is removed, you will be dealing with health challenges for the rest of your life associated with that gallbladder removal. It's impossible to be completely healthy without a gallbladder. It is impossible to be able to extract your nutrients correctly. It's impossible to be able to detox correctly without a gallbladder. Now, I'm not saying if you have incredible pain, and gallstones can be incredibly painful, you got to do what you got to do. But don't think that you're going to be able to live a completely normal life without a gallbladder after, you have, after you've had one removed. It's just not going to happen because of the incredibly important and functional nature of this organ. And doctors don't tell you this. The doctors make it sound like you don't need that silly little thing that it's just an extra organ or you can somehow get by and you can get by without a gallbladder you just can't live 100 your your body can't function on a, can't fire on all cylinders it can't function with a, at 100% without a gallbladder it's just not going to happen the biggest problem with the gallbladder is foods all gallbladder issues need to be regarded as problems with foods food digestion food toxins food allergens food intolerances if you have back pain after meals, if you've got nausea after meals, if you have loose stools after meals, you should consider that it's very possible that you're dealing with the beginnings, at least, of a gallbladder issue. Gluten intolerance can cause it. Any, any so-called lectins, gluten is just one of a whole series of lectins, plant defensive molecules. All these plant defensive molecules can wreak havoc on the gallbladder. Any gallbladder issue should first and foremost be regarded as a food and digestive system issue. If you're dealing with a gallbladder problem, if you have gallstones or you just have pain after eating, pain in the gallbladder area after eating, nausea after eating, you got to go on a fast. Go on a Swero V cleanse. If you can't go on a fast, just go on a Swero V cleanse for a couple of days. Your gallbladder issues should disappear. And then when you start eating again, pay very close attention to how you feel after you eat specific foods. The most obvious problem that's linked to gallbladder health is going to be the formation of gallstones. And it's pretty well established that gallstones are the result of bile that has become sticky and sludgy, hypersaturated. That's the technical term for sludgy bile. I call it sludgy bile, but really it's supersaturated or hypersaturated bile. It's hypersaturated with cholesterol. It's hypersaturated with old hormones. It's hypersaturated with waste products. The bile, remember, is responsible for cleaning the blood. The bile is a, a, a detoxification substance. We, most people know that bile is important for digestion, but what's underappreciated is that bile cleans the system. It runs through the digestive tract. When you eat a food, that food goes through the, through the stomach. The stomach's got to process the food with enzymes and acid. We talked about this yesterday. A lot of people don't make enough stomach acid, and that can be the beginnings of digestive problems. So the food gets crushed up in the, in the stomach. It gets uh, macerated, and the stomach grinds it all into, into a soupy mass, which, by the way, requires water for you folks who don't like to drink water with your meals. If you're eating processed food that doesn't have water in it, you're not going to be able to digest your food as effectively. See if you can notice that you eat less food when you drink water. I know pe people are, have, this, uh, have this belief. I've heard a lot of alternative practitioners actually say this, that somehow that water will dilute your digestive juices. Not true. Digestive juices are designed to work in a milieu of water. Usually that water is supposed to come from foods, fresh foods, water-rich foods, but most of us aren't eating a lot of water-rich foods. So it's very important that you drink water with your meals so that your digestive, uh, your stomach can turn all that stuff, all that food that's, that is crushing up into a soup. The food has to be turned into soup. It's called chyme, C-H-Y-M-E. And if you're not eating food that's water rich, it may be more difficult for, get, for you to get this chyme produced. In any case, the chyme drops into, uh, into, the, uh, into the intestine. And when it drops into the intestine from the stomach, it gets hit with a big old blast of bile from the gallbladder, in addition to pancreatic enzymes. All right, we'll take a break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll return right after this. Okay, 
Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacist, uh, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. We also have our Young Jeffy products up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can purchase products at that phone number, all the longevity products. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. Call 866-735-2470 or click on the Join the Team links at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got lines open for you at 844-236-6010, and we will get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the Bright Side. We're talking about energy energy in the form of fats, that is, and fat digestion. It's all about energy. Low energy is now associated with cancer. It's associated with aging. It's associated with the disease process. I was just reading an article here from the the latest edition of the Townsend Letter, which is a really cool alternative alternative medicine magazine. Sometimes it gets a little too medical, but... uh, it's got some always has always has at least one or two good stories. The Townsend Letter, T O W N S E N D Letter. I've had had a subscription to this thing for thirty years, uh, and I get a lot of good information from. It. I was just reading an article called "The Link Between Cancer and Mitochondria: Restoring Mitochondria Function to Fight Cancer." The mitochondria are the little sub subcellular structures that live inside of cells. There's hundreds to thousands of them inside a cell. That alone is pretty mind-boggling. The mitochondria are are actually independent entities. They've somehow merged with cells to allow cells to utilize energy from oxygen. But as we age, these mitochondria don't work as well. They don't, somehow they don't have, they lose their ability, or at least they have a decreased ability to extract energy from oxygen. And it's thought that cancer is the end result of an inability of these mitochondria to uh, at least functionally be able to extract uh, ox- uh, extract energy from oxygen and cancer cells have, are cells that uh, have resorted to a, another form of, of energy production using sugar for energy. So it's thought that cancer, it's thought that aging, and you're going to be hearing, reading about this more and more if you follow health, about the relationship between mitochondrial dysfunction and disease, mitochondrial dysfunction and aging, mitochondrial dysfunction and cancer. And what they're really talking about is an inability of the mitochondria to act, extract energy. It's an energy problem. Where do we get energy from? Well, we get energy from uh, sugar, but the best source of energy is going to be from fats. Oxygen burns the sugar. Oxygen burns the fat. That's called oxidation. And uh, if you don't have enough fat or your body's not processing fat correctly, it's going to be, uh, you're going to be a sugar burner. One of the most important ways to stay healthy is to be a fat burner, not a sugar burner. That's why the ketogenic diet is so helpful. The ketogenic diet induces the body to be a fat burner rather than a sugar burner. That's why it's important to go low sugar or low carb when you're on the ketogenic diet and high fat. The low sugar, low carb in combination with the high fat redirects the body to burning fat rather than sugar. And the ketogenic diet is an awesome way to eat whether you're sick or not. But if you are sick, if you have cancer or diabetes or Alzheimer's disease or neurological problems or any illnesses, the ketogenic diet is an amazingly helpful tool. It is the ideal way for human beings to eat. And I know there's some controversy around it, but in my humble opinion, from a biochemistry perspective, the ketogenic diet is the way that we want to eat because it compels the body, it induces the body to become a fat burner. So fats are processed through the, gall, um, through the gallbladder and also the pancreas and also the liver. Food drops in from the stomach. It hits the pancreas or it hits the intestine. And, and once it drops through the intestine as chyme, C-H-Y-M-E, which is kind of a, a soupy, sl- uh, a semi-fluid mass of partially digested food and, and various secretions, it drops into the intestine. And when it goes into the intestine as an acid, it has to be acidic when it goes into the intestine because that acid triggers bile and pancreatic juices. If you're not making enough stomach acid, you're not going to get that trigger to, uh, for bile to drop, uh, be secreted and for pancreatic juices to be secreted. So uh, acidification of the digestive contents at the level of the stomach is important for bile and for pancreatic enzymes to hit the, uh, hit the food. Now, if the food is acidic, 
a very interesting thing happens. You get an acid base reaction. Bile is basic. Bile is alkaline. Pancreatic enzymes are alkaline. And so when that pancreatic, when the pancreatic secretions, pancreatic enzymes, and the bile hit the acid in the food, you get an acid-base reaction, sort of like what happens when you mix acid and base in a, in a little uh, lemon juice, say, and baking soda in a, uh, in a cup you'll get a little fizzy reaction, and that fizzing reaction releases the fats out of the chyme. It's kind of like if you ever want to get rid of a, a, a fatty material that's baked onto a pan, say you bake a roast beef or something, and uh, you get all this kind of roast beef juices and fats that are stuck to the bottom of the pan, you can do an acid-base reaction to loosen up the, the uh, uh, loosen up the stuck on fat and stuck on uh, beef juices. You put a little baking soda or maybe some soap, some dish soap, and then you mix it in with some acid and it'll, it'll fizz up a little bit and it'll release, it'll break up the, the grime and the, the fatty material that's stuck in the bottom of the pan. The same thing happens with the chyme. The, the base, the alkaline stuff from the bile, the alkaline bile and the alkaline pancreatic enzymes hits the acid food. You get an acid base reaction, you get a fizzing reaction, and uh, the fats are then released. Now, if you're not making enough bile, that's not going to happen. If you have a pancreatic problem, that's not going to happen as effectively, and many people aren't making enough sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate is basic, and that's involved in the process, and there's a lot of healthcare practitioners that actually recommend sodium bicarbonate for digestive health. Look up anything by Dr. Mark Circus, S-I-R-C-U-S. He talks about that a lot. So anyway, gallbladder bile from the gallbladder is very important. If you've had your gallbladder removed, guess what? That's not going to happen. If you've had your gallbladder removed, you may get a little trickle of bile coming in from the liver, but you're not going to get that big blast of bile, and that means you're going to have a you're going to be compromised at the level of uh, uh, fat absorption. You're going to have a defect in the body's ability to extract fats, extract fats. And I'm not even talking now about vitamin E and vitamin A and vitamin K and vitamin D and phytonutrients, all of which are fatty. I'm just talking about straight old straight fat. So the gallbladder is incredibly, incredibly important, and having gallstones is not a reason to have your gallbladder removed. Unless you have painful gallstones, and you have to have an emergency uh, cholecystectomy, as they say, that's different. But if you have silent gallstones, and many people have stones, and they're told to have their gallbladder taken out, that's not a great idea. Now, if you already have the gallstones, there's things that you can do. You can't do anything pharmacologically. There's no real drugs that can get rid of gallstones. They do, they do use something called UDCA, which is a part of the bile, a component of bile, but it doesn't really work that effectively. If you have silent gallstones, you may want to consider doing a liver flush. Now, the standard pharmacologically approved way to flush the liver is by doing a coffee enema, which works by introducing caffeine into the lower colon. We'll talk about coffee enemas here when we come back from our break. Uh, caffeine is really interesting. When you introduce caffeine inside the, into, the, uh, into the lower part of the colon via an, via an enema, it acts like a vasodilator, which leads to uh, the liver pouring out its toxins into the colon where they're released. It is, uh, it's kind of a, uh, uh, an intense procedure, we'll say. There's alternatives to coffee enemas, but you should know coffee enemas are not some kind of crazy uh, alternative medicine strategy. Coffee enemas have actually been used medically for thousands of years. All right, time to take a break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. On the bright side, pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, or a comment or success story you'd like to share, questions about our longevity products, or if you uh, have questions about our true skin health products or formulations or ingredients or health challenge that you'd like help with, 844-236-6010 is our number. You can go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com to purchase longevity products, or you can call 866-735-2470. And, of course, if you'd like to check out our Truth Skin Health products, you can check them all out at truthtreatments.com, or Truth Biomimetic Mineral Mist made with fulvic minerals, our Truth Retinol 1% and 5% gel. If you want to take care of wrinkles or dark spots, or you want to prevent wrinkles or dark spots, Vitamin A is so important for the skin. Maybe the skin's most important vitamin. Uh, maybe the skin's most important ingredient. You know, vitamin A is the only FDA-approved ingredient 
for wrinkles and for anti-aging as well as for acne. That's one of the neatest things about vitamin A is it's, it's good for young folks who are dealing with acne. It's good for older folks who are deal, dealing with wrinkles. Uh, there's vitamin A. Uh, there's different forms of vitamin A. Retinoic acid is the active form of vitamin A that requires a prescription. Retinol is the preactive form of vitamin A. It's it turned into retinoic acid, and of course, it's available without a prescription. It's available at TruthTreatments.com in one percent strength and five percent strength, along with all the other Truth Treatment products. You can find find out all about them at TruthTreatments.com. TruthTreatments.com. All right, we'll read a couple stories here, and then we'll get your phone calls. Hang tight if you're on hold. We do have lines open, 844-236-6010. This is interesting. Well, actually, I read this one already. Let's do, the, let's do another one here. From the frontiers of neuroscience, even quick meditation aids cognitive skills. College students who listen to a 10-minute meditation tape complete simple cognitive tasks more quickly and accurately than peers who listen to a control recording on a generic subject. That's from Yale University and Swarth- Swarthmore, Co- Swarthmore College, published in the journal Frontiers of Neuroscience, August the 6th, last month. Meditation is unbelievably valuable for all kinds of things, for lowering blood pressure, for improving blood sugar control, for cognition, for relaxation, as an anti-anxiety tool. If you're on anxiety, if you're on anxiety medicine and you want to wean yourself off, learn to meditate and it's not complicated. It's not necessarily spiritual, although it, could be, it can be spiritual. Medit- anybody who's listened to this program knows that I'm a big believer in meditation. I've had a meditation practice myself for almost 25, oh, going, pushing 30 years now. When I was in my early 20s, I was like, I got to learn to meditate. This stuff is powerful. And indeed, it is a powerful, powerful health strategy. Meditation is medication. Meditation is better than medication. If you're on a benzodiazepine type drug, anti anxiety type drug, Xanax, or even a, a, an antipsychotic drug, you definitely want to learn to meditate. And it's as simple as listening to your breath. That's how easy it is to start a meditation practice. Spend five minutes listening to your breath. Spend five minutes listening to your heartbeat. Spend five minutes listening to your thoughts. Most of us don't really listen to our thoughts. Most of us obey our thoughts, but we don't actually listen to what's happening to our thoughts. If you just spend one minute listening to your thoughts, just watching how the thought process occurs, watching what exactly is a thought for that matter, what is, what's going on when we're thinking? Just like neurochemistry in your brain? How does that neurochemistry ter- get turned into, uh, I got to go eat this food, or I got to go take, uh, take a walk, or I got to do this or that? How does neurochemistry get turned into a thought? That is a fascinating and mysterious process that nobody has ever figured out, and probably nobody will ever figure out, but just paying attention to that thought process will put you into what's called an alpha brainwave state, or a hypnotic brainwave state. If you do it long enough, you'll go into a theta brainwave state. And the alpha and theta brainwave states are, guess what? Associated with healing. Not just relaxation. They're associated with the healing process. They're associated with growth hormone secretion. They're associated with lowering blood sugar. They're associated with improving all the markers of health, including reducing your blood pressure. Give it five minutes. Give it one minute. Give it 60 seconds. Just sit still, focus on your breath, pay attention to your breath, or focus on your thoughts, pay attention to your thoughts, and watch what happens. And if you think this is airy-fairy, Boulder, Colorado hippie talk, just read anything in any scientific journal that focuses on the brain, such as Frontiers of Neuroscience, and you'll, sure enough, every month you're going to find an article about the importance of meditation. All right, let's do one more. we got a bunch of calls now, 844-236-6010, and then we'll... Uh, and uh, we'll do one more, one more here, and then we'll get to your phone calls. Uh, this is from the uh, journal JCI Insight. Researchers from the University of Montreal Hospital Research Center and the Cummings School of Medicine at the University of Calgary have discovered a medication that makes it possible to treat ALS, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, or Lou Gehrig's disease. Listen, folks, if you're dealing with ALS, do not wait for pharmacology to save you. There is no drug that will ever be, no matter what they tell you in these scientific journals, there's no drug that will ever be created that will uh, eliminate ALS, that will eliminate any neurological issue. I've been watching commercials now for folks, for uh, drug companies talking about eliminating Alzheimer's disease with a drug. They will never come up with a drug for Alzheimer's disease. They will never come up with a drug for Parkinson's disease. They will never come up with a drug for ALS, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, because these kinds of neurodegenerative diseases are the end result of a long-term assault on the body. 
They're inflammatory conditions that are uh, the manifestations of defensive responses that result from long-term assault, long-term attack. Where does that long-term assault and attack come from? Food. If you are dealing with ALS or any kind of neurological health issue, backtrack to the digestive system, use digestive support, especially digestive enzymes, and do not wait for pharmacology or the medical model to save you. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Carolyn in Washington and say good morning. What's up, Carolyn? Welcome to The Bright Side. Hi. I was listening to you yesterday, and you had that uh, talking about the stun gun and, and the guy ah. that called in and uh, took care of the pain. Yes, so for, venom, for venomous, he had venomous bites. I, yeah, he about and, but he said it, the pain went away in 30 minutes, and I started thinking because I have a battling sciatica for so long. What if I did that to my sciatica, where it hurts either yeah, my it, back, where it originates, or my hip, where it goes down my leg? Definitely worth a shot. Definitely worth a shot. Yeah. Have you ever heard of a tens okay. unit? Have you ever heard of this, this little uh, device called a tens unit? T e n s. I have one. Doesn't help. Doesn't help. Well, it's a, kind of the same idea, although a stun gun may be a little bit more intense than a TENS unit. You might want to try it. Uh, look for inflammatory th- uh, issues if you have sciatica. And also, you know what about else for folks who are dealing with sciatica? Uh, get body work done. In fact, anytime you have any sort of muscle or nerve pain uh, associated with things like sciatica, which is the, sciati- uh, the sciatic nerve, inflammation of the sciatic nerve, or, or a TMJ in the, in the jaw area, uh, you definitely want to uh, get manipulated or mis- uh, intense massage where they break up scar tissue. Um, I love rolfing. That's an, that's, to me, that is an, a really, really incredible form of body work. They break up scar tissue that can, that can form uh, if, when you hold your body in a wrong position for a long period of time or you're contracting your muscles for a long period of time. Scar tissue forms, and that's really where you end up with a lot of pain that's associated with the connective tissue and the muscle tissue, and rolfing can release that. R-O-L-F-I-N-G, rolfing. It can be pretty intense. But when you're done with a rolfing session, a lot of times you can well, pain that's been in your body for months or for years can just simply disappear. It's really an amazing bo- bo- uh, body work procedure. As far as nutrition goes, Carolyn, think essential fatty acids. They're the most powerful anti-inflammatory nutrients that you can use. Also, you might want to consider uh, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and high doses of vitamin C and also high doses of vitamin E, all of which are very wonderfully anti-inflammatory. Thanks for your call, Carolyn. Hope we helped you. Out. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return Aging with more. is one thing that... Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Let's go to Michigan and say good morning to Jim. What's up, Jim? Welcome to The Bright Side. Hey, Ben. I always enjoy your program. Thank I've you. been having uh, issues with uh, my blood pressure going like way out of crazy, and then it goes back down again. I uh, I didn't realize it until I went to saw my dentist the other day, and uh, my blood pressure at that time was like two ten, uh, two no uh, way two oh one. Yeah, two oh one. And uh, so, anyway, what's what's happening is it, it's uh, like I'll be sitting down. I and I actually went out and purchased a blood pressure machine. You know. And right. uh, if I'm relaxing or something, it'll be uh, like 140 over 80. Uh, but uh, maybe being anxious about being in the dentist seat, which is uh, <laughs> 201 but over what? To, what was the what was the lower number? What was the diet? They I think the, it was one. I think it was one 110. Wow. Yeah, that's that's definitely. Do you think you were freaked out by the by the dentist? Were you going to have some dental work done? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> okay, you might have been. They, they call it white coat hypertension. I don't know if you've heard of that term, white coat hypertension. Well, I get any doctor I, I go to, uh, yeah. man, but, you know, like I'll, uh, I'll, I'll measure it today, and I was, you know, doing stuff that was 189 over 110, and then I'll sit down, Wait. and it'll be 140 over 80. So I, still it's high. all over the place. Yeah, that's still oh, high. Yeah, so, absolutely. Is, what's it associated? Is it associated with like food or something, or is can you link it to anything? Not really. I, uh, I guess uh, I, I wouldn't call it anxiety, but uh, I've been studying politics and medicine. And I, you know, I don't. Trust That'll make you anxious. I, don't be, don't be watching the news. <laughs> <laughs> if you are you watching the yeah, news? Yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, no, I actually I don't. I. I uh, I listen to like Alex Jones and you know. Well, Alex uh, will raise your blood pressure. I, I wonder what Alex's <laughs> blood pressure is sometimes. 
Alex is a great right, guy, I, by the I, way. I'm just kidding. Like, yeah, I've, uh, I've actually done a lot of radio on politics. I've done uh, debates with uh, the health department over the vaccine issue. It's Have you just, been on the air? So much. Have you been on the I air? Beg your pardon? You've been on the air? Oh, absolutely, yes. Are you a radio guy? I, uh, no, actually, uh, I just stumbled into these things, and I, I just get different issues, and I'm always asked to be a guest. Uh, okay. I had a, a, a TV program down here as a t- town hall. And they okay. asked me to come and debate debate, debate the fax, vaccine issue with two pediatricians. But the problem we had was that no pediatrician or health department in all of northern Michigan would come on and debate me. So That's, that's <laughs> fascinating. Hey, listen, you know that there's a link between your thoughts, your thinking, and your blood pressure, right? I absolutely agree with you on that. Absolutely. Okay. All right, so you may be taking things a little bit too seriously in terms of the politics and the vaccine, so, so lighten up there. That's one thing you might want to do. Another thing you might want to do is practice your SDR breathing. Have you heard me talk about that? Slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. SDR breathing. In fact, it's great that yes, you have... Sir, bl- I have. Okay, so that's what you want to do. And use your blood pressure cuff as a diagnostic tool for you so you can see how well you're doing. So take your blood pressure when it's high and then do a SDR breathing. In fact, get an app, a phone app called... Um, Bio breathing, or another one called My Calm Beat, and you can it'll kind of walk you through the breathing process. You can set the set the time, uh, uh, the length of your inhale, and length of the exhale, and it'll, it'll give you a, a visual representation of the time. So you can kind of uh, you can kind of uh, 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 make your breathing line up with the visual representation on your phone. It's a great way to practice SDR breathing, and then take your blood pressure again. And watch what happens. Hot baths and hot showers can do the same thing, or warm baths and warm showers can also do the same thing. So taking a warm bath every day is a good idea too. And then of course there's great nutritional supplements that can help lower your blood pressure. Magnesium is stupendously valuable. Are you on a, a supplement program? Well, I just got uh, the uh, the uh, Dr. Wallach's products, and I did get potassium, and I did get a lot of magnesium. I've got the good. EFAs. Get some uh, ultimate so niacin. Start- get on the ultimate niacin as well. Take one or two of those oh, a day. Okay, That's, nice. Yeah, All right. Great for lowering blood pressure. The Sweeties will also help you lower your blood pressure. How's your weight? I'm uh, 5'11", and I weigh uh, just under 200 pounds. So. Do you, are you getting I'm a gut really around your weight. belly? You getting a gut going on? Yeah, I, I yes, I've been working okay. on that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I'm not not saying that to rip on you. I'm just telling you, insulin is responsible sure, for. I understand. Okay, so insulin is responsible for the gut and also for blood pressure elevation. So you might want to consider getting on the sweeties. And then if you're not, you may not be diagnosed as a diabetic, but just treat yourself like a diabetic and laying off the sugar. Going ketogenic is another good strategy. If you're not exercising, that's a great way to strengthen your heart and help lower your blood pressure. Even just getting on a rebounder um, five minutes every day, a mini trampoline, that can help you as well. There's so many things you could do with, uh, for your blood pressure, for lowering your blood pressure at home. And I've got to tell you this. The drugs they give you, the antihypertensive drugs they give you, are among the most toxic and deadly of all drugs. The so-called calcium channel blockers, the beta blockers, even the less intense drugs like the diuretics can cause uh, the, uh, mineral loss, which can lead to fr- problems down the road. So you really want to stay away from being medicalized or pharmacologicalized, I guess you'd say, uh, to lower blood pressure. Be- there's so many things you can do uh, to lower blood pressure at home. Treat it as a sign of, uh, of, of an activated stress response, whether that stress is mental or emotional or physical in terms of blood sugar or eating the wrong kinds of food uh, or uh, lack of oxygen. Hypoxia will also uh, cause a hypertensive response, low blood oxygen. So treat it uh, mentally, treat it emotionally, treat it physically by lowering your blood sugar, by practicing your SDR breathing, by relaxing your muscles, and by getting on a good nutritional supplement program that features magnesium, niacin, all the electrolytes that you're talking about, potassium and and sodium and calcium, and then... uh, and then also essential fatty acids, omega-3 essential fatty acids, and then using blood sugar lowering strategies, uh, supplements like uh, chromium and vanadium, uh, as well as the magnesium and the selenium and the niacin. All right, good luck with everything, Jim. Thanks opinion? for your call. Appreciate it. Anything else? Can I get your opinion on something? Ben? Sure. Sure. Uh, I'm, I have an appointment to do... Uh, a chelation with EDTA uh, Love and a it. DO who's uh, very holistic. What do you think about that? It's awesome. Chelation is one of the best things you could do. How old are you, by the way? I'm, I'll be 70 this, uh, this month. That's great. Chelation will extend your life. 
It's an amazing, amazing helpful uh, health strategy, and that's in, uh, IV chelation with EDTA, but you can also do oral chelation with selenium, with vitamin C, with N-acetylcysteine, with sulfur. All of these are ways that you can, chelation is just uh, magnetically pulling toxins out of the blood, and you can do it orally with nutritional supplements, or you can do it intravenously with EDTA, and I'm a big Big, big believer in it. I've seen amazing things with uh, IV, uh, intravenous chelation. Uh, and that includes, by the way, for cancer as well. All right. Thanks for your call, buddy. Thanks, Appreciate man. it, Jim. Hope right. we helped you out. Now. Thank you. Thanks for listening, too. All right. Let's, get, uh, let's see what Alan in Minnesota has to say. Good morning, Alan. How you doing? Hey, good morning. Thanks for the call. Sure. What's so, going on? I have a friend who uh, got a new job and was stressed out. And over the last year, they've gained a lot of weight. Eating. And... Well, and I'm wondering about that REZ product and how what a diet would be while you're using that Ke- ketogenic diet. I, you know, I don't even know what the R. That's a longevity product, right? The REZ yeah. res. Yeah. Yeah, I wish yeah. I don't really even know what that is to tell you the truth. So I can't really talk about it. I, the, longevity okay. has so many products, and I actually don't know all the products, um, even though I've been in the business now for 20 years. I keep adding products, so I don't really know what the res is. I can't really tell you about that, but I can tell you there's lots of things you could do uh, from a dietary perspective if you want to lose weight. Most importantly, is reduce your intake of refined sugars and carbohydrates. So if he's snacking and he's eating a lot because he wants to, uh, because whatever he's frustrated about his job or, or or there's some kind of hassle going on there. Use celery sticks, use carrots, uh, use uh, okay. fiber, make fiber pudding. You can actually make a dessert with fiber pudding where you take chia seeds, which uh, swell up when, you con- when they contact liquid, and then adding coconut juice uh, or coconut water to uh, chia seeds and then sweetening it up with stevia or if you want to throw in some raisins in there and some nuts. And that makes a great low-calorie dessert for people who are, uh, can't stop eating. Uh, what you want to stay away from, though, is the hi- uh, hi- uh, highly processed foods and highly pro- processed carbs. You can also uh, fill yourself up with uh, a fiber drink. The chia, puddings, the chia pudding will fill you up, too, by the way. But a fi- I like a fiber drink to fill me up when I feel like eating something and I don't, I don't, I don't want to eat, but I feel like eating. I mean, I'm, I know I shouldn't eat, but I, my body's telling me to eat. I make a fiber drink with fiber, turmeric, uh, sometimes I'll use a little almond milk. Uh, the fiber, I grind up flax seeds to get the fiber. I put in some turmeric sometimes and some almond milk. And then a, a little touch of stevia or sometimes a little touch of honey in there and some cinnamon and clove. And it makes a nice filling flaxseed fiber drink. So there's lots of ways you okay. can hack into your appetite. But uh, eating behavior is one of the hardest things to control because we get rewarded when we eat. We get dopamine. We get brain chemicals that are secreted when we eat. And most of us, if we're not, if we're not getting rewarded from other things, we're going to go for the food and we live live in an empire of food where we're encouraged to eat at every turn. So it's really tough to control that. Thanks for your call, Alan. Appreciate it. And we are flat out out of time on the Bright Side. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.